What is a supported learning group? Uh, it's a group study environment that's facilitated by uh, a student who's done the course and really done well in it and has a strong understanding of the material. And then they're going to create uh, a learning environment where people can come and discuss and debate the ideas to practice questions, to learn strategies in order to uh, effectively solve problems, to prepare for tests, to review notes, to meet new, new friends in um, the course. I think every session has its own little dynamic, but it's ultimately tied into the concept that it's group study and you're reviewing the course material for one of these challenging courses on campus. The benefit of facilitating versus teaching for me is it's all about empowering the students that are there. Um, if you teach it, it demonstrates that you as the SLG leader know the material and you can explain it well. But if you facilitate an environment where the students are the ones that are actually explaining the material, coming up with concepts, developing analogies to understand it, developing examples, answering questions, and sharing those solutions with the group, then you're empowering them to make sure that they're taking control of their own learning, they truly understand it, they have a deep appreciation for the material and are able to teach it to someone else. I think what's hard as an SLG leader is that people come in and they don't understand the role necessarily. They don't understand that you're not supposed to teach, that you're supposed to facilitate. And it can be hard to try to explain that to somebody because you don't want to explain it over and over and over again in session. But it can be hard when all you want to do is give someone the answer. All you want to do is just solve their problems, and that would be a quick fix, but like you have to stick to the model because the model does work. And I think that's the hardest part. It's like I just want to I, I, sometimes I just want to be like, "I can help you," and like this is the answer, but it's like that's not fundamentally going to solve the problem. I think in this role, the most difficult part about being leaders that maybe um, your peers, like the people that come to your session, may think that you're too much of a leader and they might see you as someone who has like authority over them. You realize that as an SLG leader you don't actually need, like you do need to have like an A on that course, but you don't really need to have that knowledge on that course. You can SLG whatever course just by following the model of just facilitating. I think, yeah, first week is stressful because I sort of, I remember feeling like I needed to teach them every single thing that like had ever happened in the class and like make sure everybody perfectly yeah. understood it. And then I think after a while I sort of realized like, yeah, you're there to help people, but like there's only so much you can do. Like you just need to like, if you go over everything, like people just will eventually understand it. Mm -hmm. um, like they need to do their own work as well. Like you can't be the be all end all to like their learning. Um, and then the workroom was also intimidating, but I sort of, I don't know, you get to know people. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, actually though, like I'm debating on where the dress if I do, you're wearing your suit there. Okay, I'm going to the workroom, same thing. There's these accomplished people. I'm walking in and I was like, oh, should I don't belong here? Like, this is. Within a week, I was like, hey guys, like, how are you? You know, it's a very different atmosphere. It's very relaxing, it's very open, it's very engaging. I guess initially it was just a really great place to work on your handouts, uh, work on anything you need to for SLGs, but it quickly becomes the place you go to eat lunch or if you have. Uh, half an hour between classes to just kill some time and hang out or even if I'm feeling really Stressed out about a group paper or something. I can go and I can talk to people and we'll have a nice rant about group projects When you go into the workroom before a midterm instead of sitting outside the hallway of where you take an exam where everybody's freaking out and going like oh, I'm gonna fail this exam and this is crap and I don't know anything everybody in the workroom is like no you're gonna do fabulous you're great you can do this like and that's so key I mean you can meet so many different people in, in your res in first year and you may or may not have a connection with them but you come to a program like this and everyone's kind of like-minded we all have this amazing love of learning and you see it in everyone and no matter where they're coming from there's that like that common factor and it's that love of learning that you see in everyone you're like whoa like it's not just me you're like there's other people like me <laughs> I guess the connections I made in the workroom as well like these you know meeting you meeting all the other leaders that's been really really cool um and friendships I think I can have forever and role models that you know what I mean like you hold on this golden pedestal then you kind of have to remind yourself once in a while like oh I can be up there too like I you know I have all these other things in common with them um
I think a leader, a leader has to come from a follower. Like you need to, to become a leader, you need to understand the people that you want to lead. You need to understand uh, what they feel, what do they believe, and where they come from. So you cannot be a leader by just imposing your own thoughts. You need to be, be able to be open um, and lead the, the people on the direction you think is best for them. So I think any leader that's actually put in a lot into this role um, gets what they want out of it. So the, the varied opportunity or the opportunity can lead to in, like just confidence in their communication skills. I've seen some leaders who are super shy at the beginning and can't make a class announcement and by the end or can make the class announcement but are very nervous about it and by the end they're comfortable going into Rosansky and making announcements to 600 people, easily engage a group of 60 to 100 people at a, a midterm set time session. But definitely being more confident in myself and being able to not only lead sessions but be a leader in general and even uh, applying for a job that I maybe wouldn't have before I became an SLG leader but I realized that I did have the skills and competencies to do it and take on a greater leadership role on campus. So. Yes, yeah, so like I would say like from SLG program I have learned a lot of strengths that I didn't know I have, so I have um, learned a lot about myself and what I can do and um, just thinking about my own actions and thoughts more than I used to do before, so. Well, also, like, like we said, like the sense of being part of a family, also um, something that I'm grateful about the SLG leaders because, you know, like in your life you go through ups and downs and especially when you're in your, your downs, um, I found like the SLG family very supportive and uh, I'm very grateful for that. Like it's not just about the academics, just doing sessions, but also like you become friends with uh, all the SLG leaders and with your supervisors. They're just friends too, so. I often just can't believe that I get to come to work and like work with such great people. Like I, ju I just feel really, really lucky. A lot of people, you know, they don't mind their work, or it's, it's perfectly fine and it's just their job. I love my job. And I'm just so, I feel so grateful that I'm able to work at something that I really, really love. I think it's really become part of my identity. Um, and it's something that I'm really proud of. Uh, my experience has been like very overwhelmingly positive. Um, yeah, like I can't, like as stressful as it is sometimes, like I can't imagine not being an SLG leader. It's been a great ride and I only, the only regret that I have is that I didn't start it earlier. Um, and I hope that wherever I go later on in, uh, in my life, wherever that takes me, I hope I can always bring what I've learned in the program to wherever I go. Dissecting how to help other people, you in turn have to dissect about how you can help yourself and how you learn yourself. So. That's been really, really useful for sure. <laughs> Overall, it has been a really great experience. I would consider it to be the most valuable experience I've had at university. If you're in this program, you're automatically associated with like 40 other people who are so cool and amazing. So, so just like to be an SLG leader, be really cool and amazing, I guess. And I, I fell I hear so much, you hear often, oh, the kids, students these days aren't, aren't motivated or they have all these challenges compared to students 15, 20 years ago. It's something, or a theme that I, I've heard at times. But whenever I work with you guys and I work with the leaders, it's, 
I don't get that sense at all. I'm so energized by the things that people are taking on, by like the the talented youth that we have in the world and the change and difference that people are going to be made. Like I feel like this group and this program invigorates me and that the world is, is okay and things are all right and we have this really awesome cohort of students that are coming through and are going to be doing great things down the road and who want to give back and really care about their fellow fellow um, community members and, and really want to be a part of something bigger and better. As you held on me, held on as tightly as you held.